Howdy YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Gunman. So today I thought I would do a video on some UV fillers. So I was at work the other day and I recently have had a couple of weeks off work and I've been using lots of two-pack fillers on my own Tirana that you see here in the background. No doubt you've seen a few videos on that in the past anyway. And basically all I use at work is UV fillers. So originally I was going to do like a short video, like a TikTok or an Instagram two-minute video. And I thought about it and I thought, you know what? This topic probably warrants something with a little bit more substance. So I've written down a few key points. Um, and it's mainly going to be focusing on UV because I would imagine most people... Uh, pretty well familiar with the two-pack uh, fillers, but um, anyway, let's get straight into it. So the first one that I've got written down is safety. So one key thing that you have to be very aware of is safety. So UV light um, is not good. It carries a bit of radiation with it. So um, this is one thing that some people still hold some... <clears throat> Now, this is one thing that some people um, may not quite realize that it has been refined. So, if you look at um, all of these fillers that we've got here, it will say UVA, right? So, look, I would highly recommend before going and taking any advice of anyone off the internet, do your own due diligence and, and read up and fact check what I'm saying. But I'm just going to give you give it to you, Cliff Notes, as the best that I understand it. So UVA is a smaller part of the spectrum, right? So they've managed to get it down to a smaller wavelength that it needs to cure this primer. So previously, I think they needed like a, a much bigger part of the um, electromagnetic spectrum, which was much worse for you so uv technology has been around for quite some time i still remember when it first came out ppg introduced a uv primer i must have been like a second year apprentice or something um it was all the news everyone was talking about it for a couple of months and then it died off and you basically never heard of it again until about five or six years ago um, well, that was my experience anyway. No doubt there was some shops out there that continued to use it. But, um, yeah, what was happening, I believe, with those old lamps, they were like a globe lamp. They were really expensive, and they were actually sending people blind. That's what I heard anyway. I don't know how true that is. Still use your, your glasses and all that. Um, I would highly recommend that. But it's not as bad as what some people may think it still is. So when I'm at work, I've actually got another lamp. So this is the Spectratec Instacure UV LED. As you can see there, it's got, um, you know, four big banks of UV lights and they're quite powerful. Um, so that obviously helps dry the, the, the fillers and the primers nice and fast. But I actually have like another little handheld one. And what I will actually even do with that to make it so that I don't even need, need to use it is um, a lot of the time, so you've got, like, these are the only ones that I've used, right? So, th th as far as the body fillers go, and, and look, I, for, for what they are, I think they're awesome. Not the biggest fan of this filler. Now, Specula are always sort of updating their product. So, this may be an, an outdated product. But either way, what I was going to say before is, when I'm at work, I will fill the chips in on the bonnet or whatever it is. And then I will actually hold it flat onto the panel. So, I'm not getting any of that light. Um, coming out and, and getting onto uh, myself or into my eyes. So that's just something that I do myself. You don't have to obviously do that. Um, they do actually say to hold it back a bit. So it's, it's not necessary. But look, all I can say is it works for me. So, you know, if it works, do it. Um, okay, the next thing that I've got written down, I've got a little list here, is speed. So in the body shop, like a smash work environment, um, you just will not beat the speed. I'm talking legit 10 seconds to dry a pinhole. It even says here from 15 to 60 seconds. So yeah, I usually count sort of 10 to 15 seconds per chip. So as I say, I'll, I'll hold it there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you might, look, I've even done bonnets with just covered in stone chips right and you might think oh you got to stand there 15 seconds on each one but what i will do is once you do the fill in of um once you put that bit of filler in you'll dry it right 
and then I'll move it on to the next one. And as I'm scraping the excess with a razor blade from the previous one, the next one's drying. So there's not really any downtime. You'll move it along, scrape the previous one, and you really don't seem to lose any time. So another thing is it doesn't shrink back. So if you've only ever used two-pack fillers, it, it kind of, it doesn't really compute. What are you talking about? It doesn't shrink back. People, they think, oh, it's it's one one K, which it is. Like, there's no hardener with it. But I was reading an article the other day, and it turns out that the way this dries is through the breaking of chemical bonds. So apparently UV is really good at breaking chemical bonds. So it, it breaks the bond, which makes it a liquid, I guess, um, and it turns into a solid. So it also has very low or zero VOC. So it does say low VOC. I have seen some say zero VOC, which is volatile organic compound, which is basically flammable. It basically won't even light on fire, which actually another thing is that it makes it safe to send via air. So this is this stuff is actually made in Canada, I believe, and they can actually send that worldwide. So that's pretty awesome. They, they we actually do have some stockers here in Australia, but at the very start there wasn't. But they were still able to send this over to Australia without um, dangerous goods uh, air freight. So that's pretty cool. Um, but also the lack of VOCs will mean that it, it's not gassing out. Like it. it dries in a completely different way than your standard two-pack fillers like you're not waiting for that chemical reaction to happen over you know minutes and hours it, it literally happens and then that's it there's no more curing to be done so um when you're going over fully cured two-pack clear coats um and you're just putting it into chips you probably can't go better than this like i would say this is actually the better way to do it um, I've used this, so this is like a more what you I guess you would call it like a rough filler, um, the, the, what you would use on a larger area. This um, and they have to be semi-transparent. You can't go too thick per layer with this stuff. Like you can just load your two pack up because it doesn't matter. It's going to dry by the chemical reaction. It doesn't matter how thick it is. It's still always going to go off. But obviously, if the light doesn't penetrate down to that bottom layer, it's not going to dry. So. Um, I actually did my tailgate on my Corolla in this stuff, um, that was around a year ago, and there is not one piece, now that was, to be clear, like, a, a section about that size, so a reasonably sized dent, um, had it dried within two minutes, so I waved that over, because it was a larger repair, I did give it a little bit longer than what I, I would for a smaller section, um, just to be sure, obviously. Um, but there is not one piece of shrink back. Um, whereas if I had have done the same repair with some of these two pack in that kind of a time, you would probably expect to have the shrink back. Another thing I've found is with these fillers, they don't have, they don't pinhole as often. Now large areas can a little bit, but as I say, that large section that I even did on my tailgate on my Corolla, I didn't even get any pinholes in it. So what, what will happen at work sometimes, I'll do like a, a repair and it might be like say, I don't know, half that size, say, say something like that size even, a quarter of that piece of sandpaper size. I'll then just go and get some 1K, the correct shade, right? Because we've got these different shades at work and, and we can use the right shade for the car. I then just go and spray a little bit of 1K primer over it, mainly for the color, and you will not have any pinholes in it. So one of the annoying things about um, the body fillers, the two-pack body fillers, and to be fair, I think some of them actually are seeming to get a little bit better for the pinholes these days, but they will pinhole. They're much more prone to pinhole. So if I was to do that same little repair, even with some of the um, the fine fillers, the fine fillers are definitely not as bad, but um, sometimes you go and put the, uh, a bit of 1K on it, and then you get a little pinhole in there. And then you'll go and get some of the fine filler and, and try and fill the pinhole up. And then because the 1K is still fresh, um, because uh, you know it just takes a bit longer to dry than any two-pack, or even UV primers, um, it, it rips, it can tear that 1K, and it just makes one hell of a nightmare. So that was one thing I've actually written down here, under speed, was stress. This can't be understated. So 
Anxiety and stress in the body shop environment is real. Anyone who's ever worked in a smash repair shop will know about that. Some shops are worse than others. A lot of it to, is to do with the organization of when the cars come in and, and go out. But when, when a painter has to do like a last minute repair or the repair that's been done has been primed, but the repair is not good enough, so you've gone and blocked through your, your two-pack primer, through to your um, two-pack body filler, right? That, or as I say, you've, you've found like a last minute little repair. The amount of stress that this has saved me, it can't be underestimated. It has literally changed the game as far as I'm concerned. It has lowered my stress in the workshop environment. A lot of the time these days, I don't, I mean, I never actually complain about a, a missed dent. I just do it. It is literally that, it's a trivial task to fix a last minute dent that a panel bed has missed. It's a trivial task to reprime up a, uh, a cut through that might turn into a pinhole. You're gonna go and put some of this um, you know, UV primer down, um, knowing that that's going to go rock hard, and if there is any uh, pinholes there, because it's a rock hard surface rather than a semi soft surface with your 1k primers it doesn't matter it's not going to tear you're not going to have any issues all right the next thing i've got written down is smash versus resto i could not imagine many restoration shops opting for the uv technology um i guess there's not much more to say apart from that but two packs going to be where it's at because you, you, you're not in you don't need the speed you know what I mean? But us in the smash environments, we do. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I've been doing this job here at home. I'm doing it at my own leisure. I'm not in any hurry. So I'm not using any uh, UV fillers. But in saying that, I did actually, I must have like nicked uh, a little bit of the inside of this door jam there. And UV just made sense, you know. So I put that UV in, dried it down in 10 seconds. So yeah, I mean... I've got the technology so I can do it, but I can't imagine most resto shops going for any UV fillers, especially you do have a price point entry barrier, I guess. The lights are not cheap, but that was another thing that I did have written down was the cost. So the costs are coming down of these lamps, thankfully. Previously, you're talking like four and a half, five thousand dollars $5,000 just for one of these kind of lamps. So I think the lamps are getting better and they are getting cheaper. So Specular is one of the brands that I do actually quite like. This is a guy from Thailand. He's, he was the guy that sent out the first lamp I've ever got. So I did actually do a review on the Specular lamp and that's actually what I use at work. So like, I mean, I wouldn't be using it daily if it wasn't good. One thing I do like about the Specular lamp is that the batteries they use, I think they're 20, 28, 650 batteries. Anyway, you can find them cheap on eBay for like, $30 or something for two of them. They're easy rechargeable. Um, so like I've got two sets of batteries, two sets of two. One's charging while the other one's in the in the, um, in the the lamp and then you can, you know, not have any downtime. The lamp itself is cheap. Comparatively, you might say, what, 1,300 bucks, that's not cheap. But compared to some of these other ones, I think at the time, this was like 2,800, but again, they are coming down. I remember quoting someone who asked me the price about this um, this one, and even by the time I'd got it to six months down the track, the price had come down uh, significantly. So it's one of those things that I 100% believe that you'll get the money's worth out of it. Um, now, if you're just a painter, you're going to have to twist your boss's arm. I wouldn't say, you know, like as a painter, we provide our own guns. It's a bit rich to expect a painter um, to provide his own uh, drying lamp. So, yeah, just show, show your boss some of the uh, awesome results that you can get out of UV tech and the time and money that it can save you. And, yeah, as I say, it's, it's like nearly a no-brainer to go and get yourself a... A good quality lamp at work if you're a boss anyway i think one of these was coming in at around 60 to 90 dollars again don't quote me on that and that is going to vary depending on where you are but i had two of these right one for my pinholes one for my um body filler repairs and i kid you not they both lasted over a year 
uh, ovary, I'm, I'm, I'm using them every day. Every day on stone chips, lasted over here. So what I will do is, um, if I don't use it all that's on the spatula, so I'll just, you know, pick a bit out, put it on the panel. If there's a little bit left, I'll just wipe it back in the top of the lid and I'll use it on the next one. As long as it's nice and clean, you, you're right to do that. Um, same thing with this, with the with the filler. If it gets dirty and dusty, just turf it out. But yeah, um, so another thing that I've got written down is there's gonna be a little bit of an adjustment period. So even me coming back from a couple of weeks of using uh, the two packs for everything, there was an adjustment period coming back to the, well, I guess getting used to this again, it goes really, really rock hard, all right? So harder than what you might think. Um, so I recommend getting it in nice and tight, like don't over apply it. You're better off putting probably two skims in need be, which it never is necessary to be honest. Um, cause it, it just seems to sand out really nicely, but hard. So if you're used to say blocking, um, your little small filler repairs out with say 180 grit, maybe just go 120. Or even 80, it might sound a little bit extreme. Like the other day I did, I tried blocking a repair out with some 180 grit, just being used to what I was doing here at home. And it just didn't work. I had to get the 80 grit out to it, get the basic shape, and then just go down through the grades. But as I say, then I was left with a pinhole free finish. All it needed was a little quick bit of 1K primer over the top of it, and I was right to go straight over it. I've actually painted straight over this stuff, and you can do it. Another thing, I think I kind of covered it earlier, but another thing definitely worth mentioning is, and specifically with this specular one, don't go too heavy with the primers. So what you worth, what, what is worth doing is like putting like a medium to wet coat and then just give it like a short flash time and then put like another medium to wet coat, again, short flash time you, um, with the primers that is. And what you're best off doing with the primers is doing thin coats, drying it, need be blocking it, sanding it, and then putting another thin, thinish coat on rather than trying to get all that coverage in one coat because, well, this one will actually crinkle up. It will actually just have this funny like a reaction, but even the ones that don't crinkle up, sometimes they'll flash over on the top, make it look dry. You'll sand it down. You may not even realize until you get it in the booth and you paint it and bake it. I've actually seen it happen to other people. I've never had it happen to me because it's something I've always been aware of and very cautious of um, to make sure that that primary is dry right down to the bottom. And that actually kind of leads into another thing about the kind of guns that you can use. Now, I have never had any issues using my primer gun with a 1.8 on it. At the end of the day, it's up to you how much primer you put on. If you just run in there, just, oh, I'm just gonna go and paint it like two pack, you're gonna have big dramas, but they do actually recommend for some people using like a 1.4 or 1.3 or even a 1.5, something like a little bit smaller, just to sort of restrict you from overloading it. But I have faith in you guys that you're gonna use the gun correctly and you're not just going to hose it on um, too heavily. So yeah, just, you know, if, if you're sort of learning and you're new in it, you're probably better off just sticking with a 1.3 just, and that's just going to hold you back from going too heavy with it. But yeah, that was about it there, guys. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Um, I probably forgot something I usually do even when I write things down in these videos. So yeah, uh, you know, let us know what you think. It doesn't end with me. These are just my opinions and thoughts. And as I say, when it comes to your own personal health and safety, that's something that you've got to take seriously. I do also find this stuff very, very pungent and very stinky and smelly. So I highly recommend using a respirator even when you're sanding it, when you're applying it, even when you're just putting it in um, with the applicator, just all be very, very careful. Anything that smells that bad cannot be good for you. That's all I know. Like, yeah, I'm not a chemist or anything, but all I can say is that anything that smells like that, it must be bad for you. Anyway, the next video that's gonna be coming up, I just realized that I haven't done a update video in the garage for a while, so I'm gonna have a bit of a workout. Haven't, haven't done some weights for ages, so I'm gonna get shredded again, mate. <laughs> anyway, until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Coming out. Oh, go buy some merch, you'll be a legend. <laughs> I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching, and if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits, so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies, and t-shirts, so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.